Cool. Uh, hi, Peter. Hi. How are you? Good. Thanks. How are you? Very well. Thanks. Uh, I'm. I'm not. I'm not good. How come? It's being broke hurts, man. <laughs> being broke literally hurts. And it sucks when you're in a gallery and you want to buy stuff and you're like, right? Yeah. I know. Mm. You don't have to be that rich to buy art, actually. I know you don't, but yeah. I mean, things weigh up. Like you didn't think of other expenses and other things, and you're like, I think I can hold off here and there. And do you know the irony actually is that when people think of artists, they assume they are at the bottom of the chain mm. of income and wealth and the like. Okay. Yet, funny enough, when it comes to their work. <laughs> It's like appreciated as mm. more valuable than the, the actual person. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I do. Yeah. Like, well, the, the cliche example is like Van Gogh, where he died yes. in like destitute. Yeah. But yeah. his work is now valued like hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. or millions of dollars. Absolutely. 100%. But his life was never something that he could properly enjoy. Yeah. So is the, is the artist's work like just to be enjoyed in posterity? No. As a matter of fact, I think the culture of it being an asset. Uh, a commodity of asset okay. was, came after the Van Goghs and the like. Okay. So, yeah. So, how, how did that come about though? Because, uh, I don't know, like something looks good when it's being made. Does it age or it's just, I don't know. I think it kicked off as a pop culture. Okay. Uh, appreciating art. Okay. Initially, I think it was just used for documenting. Uh, I know there's a lot of artists. I know colonialists, for instance, okay. traveled with artists. And back then, that was the form of communication with, oh, right, right, uh, right. yeah, with uh, those that were <laughs> on the other side. So sketch, so people would sketch yeah, things, see animals and things like that yeah, to document yeah, the process. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, there yeah. was no cameras and, and, and yeah, things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, even Pablo Picasso is known to have a background of that nature. Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's largely recognized for that. Uh, wow. Having documented uh, a lot of African history. So where, where did the Cubism st- stuff come in? Like, I, I don't understand how. It, from an influence of African history. <laughs> really? Yeah. So literally from his appreciation of seeing what he then appreciated as art here. Okay. Uh, the masks and the, the use of lines. And then, yeah, he applied that into his art and incorporated it. And then, so there's there's an African influence there. Who yeah, could have yeah. guessed? Yeah. Who could have guessed? Because I'm, re- I'm reading a book right now by Ivar Lessing called uh, Living in the Past. Okay. And he's talking about Western culture and the way Western culture pretty much stole everything from all the other places around. It's just that we remember the Greeks and the Romans because they were, they were empires and they imposed their will on other people. Yeah. But they actually stole a bunch of their stuff from the Egyptians, from the, from the Chinese, from the Scythians, from the, a bunch of other you know, races, <laughs> the Leotites, a bunch of other people who existed before. Like Pythagoras, for example. Yes. Like Pythagoras. Yes. He, he couldn't have invented, he couldn't have understood triangles had he not seen people actually building triangles. Yeah. And who was building the biggest three-dimensional triangles in the world? The Egyptians. Yeah, right. Yeah. So... Yeah. It's just the way, I guess, Africa's influence is much broader or everyone's influence, aside from the people who wrote history, is much broader. And I'm guessing it's the same with, with art. Yes. Oh, I'd like to, I always like to believe that uh, the origins of humanity always come back to Africa. Okay. So whilst we might think that, oh, someone stole something from Africa, the assumption is that they just connected with it because it you know, stemmed from their origins. Okay. So instinctively, they were probably just attracted to it and realized it answered so here's my something. curiosity art in africa has been ceremonial for okay that's my guess i'm gonna yeah. put it in my guess it's partly ceremonial um and partly de- decorative the value aspect has pretty much come from the concept of money that people could exchange it for something because of, of the rarity that it was if i'm not mistaken i think art in africa has been controversial <laughs> <laughs> also <laughs> Uh, to begin with, uh, history is written by man, yeah? yeah. And the history that has been written around art, uh, especially in the African context, mm. has been that there hasn't been art appreciation. Uh, okay. And so history hasn't really documented the aspects that we may appreciate as artistic. Mm. And so we started terming uh, things of use, of daily use, as uh, artifacts, uh, objects of interest okay. with uh, art incorporation in them. Uh, but I'd like to think that the, there's a possibility that much of what we actually recognize as art mm. was probably destroyed. And you know what? Yeah. You and Ivar Lessing are kind of meshing because he said there is no more greater ingenuity of mankind that, than what is hidden underground. All the stuff right. that has died, that's right. where most of humanity's ingenuity right. came because those, those are basically figuratively and literally the foundations. 
Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to think so too. So, but in the Zimbabwean context though, I've never really looked at the art history of Zimbabwe to see, you know, how, not valuable, but the, the genealogy of it, right. such as, as which culture started, which might you know where we began in terms of um, art and Zim. Uh, from what point? From the point of, well, first discovery in terms of when... when the, okay, because uh, we've got the aspect of Zimbabwe, yeah? Yeah. Which comes post-independence, yeah? Mm-hmm. And then we've got kingdoms that existed prior to that mm-hmm. and then Rhodesia and things of that nature. So which part are you talking about? Let's talk about the kingdoms Zimbabwe. because I've never been able to tell apart like which, which um, tribe is which. Right. Who created what? So I don't know. I don't know how to connect motifs to what they created. Uh, I would like to think that from the kingdom perspective, we would be looking at uh, the cave paintings and the like. Okay. Yeah, I know that there was an appreciation for use of pigment back then. Mm. Uh, a very ingenious kind of use of pigment that exists till today. Okay. You know, uh, whether that was deliberate or not, I have no idea. You know. And, and then there's obviously use of patterns uh, in, in different uh, aspects, you know, the houses and things of that sort. But is there any way this is documented, like to, to know that this means? I've never gone as far as that. Okay. Yeah. In, in terms of research. Yeah. I've never looked at that really. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And I'm just, I'm just trying to like draw the, the, the family tree of what was out in my head. To see what it's I, sh- I should tell you something actually. Yeah. Uh, so how i started running a gallery Mm. was actually influenced by my interest in what i assumed was tribal art okay so the intent was to actually travel the continent and unwrap what we had lost uh, through our traditions and through colonization and things of that sort so my intent was to actually start learning more about the history of african art and are you classically trained in art or you just no it became something that you just, you know. It was a healing process. I, I went through a very personal okay. uh, experience that kind of, yeah, traumatized me. And uh, so, I, yeah, it was it was a healing process. And it continues to be, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So you discover, why is art always central to some sort of healing? Like if it's not physical art in terms of uh, images or it's the creation of art or it's, it's motifs within art like music, people usually associate healing with, with art. There's never... Uh, there's never an emotional scientific solution for, for not, 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 I should not say that. There are a lot of drugs out there. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying in the sense of there's never someone, never, I've never heard someone say that about the, the, the sciences. I think because sciences are studied and you, you have to come to terms with a certain fact, yeah? Mm. Whereas art is not factual in any way at all. It's very instinctive. It somewhat feels like the voice of God. Okay. Yeah. And I say that because no one really knows what the voice of God is. <laughs> so the only thing that makes sense is to look at art as that. Okay. You know? And uh, having gone through, uh, you know, experienced a lot of studios and been with a lot of artists and realized how constant they continue to practice their art and they just can't seem to stop, you know, regardless of whether they're making money from it or not. You know, the guy keeps carving and etching this stuff and <laughs> painting these paintings. So it's basically a calling then. Like, it feels like that. Yeah. It, it seems like that. And so because of that, I feel like it's the voice of God. Okay. Yeah. So the value chain is really, in art, it's, it's really proliferated, if I should say, that it's, it's very extensive where the, the, the raw materials of the art begins up until the finished product. Yes. Or, or the sale. Let's just say the, 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 the product itself as the sale. Yeah. So I, since you're an art entrepreneur, because, yeah, I, I didn't think that was a thing in Zimbabwe until I met you. <laughs> or am I? <laughs> yes. Like, the, the first one I probably met was like, I'm devoting my life to this. Right. Yeah. Other people was like, yeah, it's, it's something that they collect. They're collectors. They've got massive collections. Yeah. I've never been someone who identified with a certain style of art. I just appreciate what looks good or what makes me feel good. Yeah. In other times, or I can describe what this does to me. But in terms of identifying particularly, uh, visual art is difficult for me to describe. Right. I, I can do that a lot better with music than I do with, with, with art. Right. Or I can make music make sense of art for me. Like it's, I, yeah, it's weird. I'm probably <laughs> blind, so I guess it makes sense. <laughs> so for you as an art, art, art entrepreneur, what in, in the artists you've worked with in terms of the value chain from the start of where they get the materials all the way up until the, the product or the sale, what are those steps like in Zim? Oh, they're hectic. 
Yeah, they're really difficult. Uh, to begin with, also, I, I, I refer to myself as a patron of the arts. Patron of the arts. Yeah, yeah. rather than that's an a, entrepreneur. That's, that's, yeah. a more, uh, that's a more, I don't want to seem like a businessman kind of thing, that, which I respect. Though, yeah. Because yeah. you have to have an appreciation for something to be able to properly enjoy it. I mean, to devote an entire gallery. Yes. Yeah. And also because art tends to be a very personal thing. Yeah. Uh, the product is a person, you yeah. know, uh, or the product is created directly by a person mm. and so you don't want to really commodify the thing and look at them like oh you're just a load of money and <laughs> I'm, I'm about to make my you know my cut so i like to appreciate it as something that we're working collaboratively and that i'm also uh, putting into okay. uh, and dedicating my time to it's it's one of the very few industries that you actually have to work directly with an individual and you work with emotions and things change mm. and each and every artist is different so it's not like uh, your expectations with a loaf of bread you know <laughs> yeah uh, wherever you open a packet of loaf of bread from in the world you're expecting the same kind of yeah. uh, experience yeah. uh, whereas with an artist it's there's no formula yes yeah, like yeah. It's, yeah. every personality is different and the creative process as well like you won't get people who do the same thing in yes. the same way. Yeah. Yes, yes. So like you were talking about in terms of the material and the like, yeah. uh, some people are using a, a recycling material and some people are buying high quality paints that take years to dry mm. and you know, premium canvases and things of that sort. So it all differs. Some people are using photography. Some people are still trying to learn to appreciate photography because wow. yeah, everyone has a phone and they're yeah. thinking, hey, is that really art? Mm. Considering I do that every day with my phone as well. Yeah. So. Interesting. Yeah, it's a very complex kind of uh, space. So in terms of the, the people you've worked with who are, let's say, the most particular about their process and how the art is presented, how's that, how's that been dealing with? Because I, I understand artists to a degree. I know that they want a, a certain set of environments they want for their work to yeah. do the work and how they want their work to be shown. Yeah. So what, what kind of, in Zimbabwe, what kind of people have you dealt with that you say this, this person has got a very particular way they want things done during the process and even in the exhibition itself? Uh, I haven't experienced a lot of uh, very conscious people in regards to how they want to present their work. Uh, we've, we've had one of two artists. Uh, I'd say I was the first one okay. <laughs> within my space. Uh, whereas uh, we started collecting art, uh, my wife and I. Yeah. And through the experience of collecting art and going through other galleries, we started realizing other aspects that we were not... Uh, experiencing in those spaces but we're seeing visually in other international spaces and so we decided to set up a gallery that would uh, match up to international standards okay. and so just by virtue of that uh, setting up a space with uh, nice walls and good lighting mm. and you know uh, and a great reception when you do your openings was something that we were not experiencing locally and so when we set that up i feel like a lot of artists were excited uh, by that mm. And yeah, so a lot of them were keen to actually uh, work with us and they're always excited to uh, present their work in such a space. Okay. There aren't that many in Zimbabwe, you know. Okay, uh, true. There aren't that, well, there's about seven galleries, so to speak, okay. in Zimbabwe. So you can imagine out of those seven, how many of them are as mm. pristine as ours. Yeah. <laughs> now, I've been here for, I think, three exhibitions. Uh, the first person was here um, and the second one was the last two invites. I can say, yeah, the, the way it was done, I can't, I have no qualms over. Right. Like, it, it, it really felt like you guys took, the, especially the curation of where to put things and place them. You know, uh, like I said, visual art for me is difficult to, to express. Yeah. But in, in terms of the way the rooms flowed. Right. Like, you could right. literally walk from the other side all the way around and you could tell that, yeah, there's some care and consideration was put yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's always a story behind it. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's yeah, quite yeah, a story. Yeah, there's yeah. the corridor in um, on uh, near St. John's College. Yes. I've been there a couple of times. That was, I think the space is, the space is the only restriction. Because for you to experience, you need to walk from the back yeah. all the way to the front. And right, then right. it's a whole... And then there's a natural, National Arts Gallery, which isn't really... It's a gallery, but not in the sense that it's as personal as, as, as artillery. Like, it's not as personal as this place. Right, yeah. It's more of, yeah. National Institute. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it feels like a, like, a, like a museum almost. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. The way yeah. they present it. The corridor, unfortunately, doesn't exist physically uh, anymore. What happened? I'm not sure. Well, they closed the space because uh, the restaurant changed. Oh right, yeah. and then those new proprietor. Oh, decided, is now there, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. And so yeah, they decided otherwise. And but they do have a virtual existence. They okay. still do run exhibitions. They recently had an exhibition in uh, a pop up space. So yeah, they still, Sad. and it's run by artists as well. So oh, okay. yeah, yeah, you can't really, you can't shut them down. Yeah, they're you gonna, can't. They're yeah. gonna find a way to the, figure out the beauty of the do. internet, though. Like, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can't really box us in. To yes, different, like yeah. we'll find a way to, to make it happen. 
But I hope they find a physical space because that 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 place was really really interesting. I know it was. Yeah, yeah it was a great concept. Yeah, uh, it was uh, founded by an artist called Helen Teed. Yeah, I met her before. She's an exceptional exceptional artist. Really? Yeah, brilliant mind. Yeah. I, so I, she was doing a lot of the right things as well. Okay. Uh, uh, from a collector's perspective. Uh, the corridor when it was being run by Helen Teed was the first space that we actually got a certificate of authenticity in Zimbabwe. Wow. Okay. When we bought an artwork. Yeah. And we've also carried through that culture. We also certify all of our artworks and mm. yeah. So interesting. Yeah. I'm gonna miss the place. It was really nice. I'm sure they'll find a physical space yeah. soon, yeah. yeah. I think something less less um less complicated in terms of how they can really set things out. Yeah. But even yeah. though the, the patrons of the place and I call, I think I call myself one like I've I've been there a bunch of times, it never it always felt it didn't feel out of place. It was just the first time adjusting to how to view the entire right, uh, right, right, It was right. just a little jarring. But the way that the art would change as the artists changed. Yeah. So with the featured artists of that of that day of that exhibition, like it, it just felt a whole lot different. It's the same space. Yeah, but, but it's it, just, it, it transforms. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, a whole yeah. lot different. That's the beauty of running a gallery, actually, uh, that you're always transforming the space and experiencing a whole different vibe all the time. Uh, that's the most exciting part. And then we live with it for 30 days <laughs> and we enjoy it. And then the artist misses their work and okay. might never see it again, ever. Oh, because it can be bought here, yeah, right? it can be bought in. Okay, yeah, cool. And it never goes back to their home. So wait, it's 30 days. If I have art and there's an exhibition, like I have to keep it in the gallery for 30 days. It's Other galleries uh, run for longer. Okay. And some would do it less, shorter. Okay. Uh, I know some spaces that would run an exhibition. We've run an exhibition for just over a weekend. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. And it really of, depends with what the artist wants. Oh, cool. In terms of like the, the, the value of being featured in a gallery is obviously the prospect of getting someone to buy it. Yes. Uh, is there any other monetary incentive in like, you know, renting their art or, or um, they just offer up the art? Uh, for the artist? Yeah. It's, or they're just expecting to sell it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when they present it in the gallery, they're just expecting that it will sell from there. So wait, this is, this is the strange thing for me is because they're giving up something they've worked so hard for. Yeah. For someone like me, who's really not going to buy anything anytime soon, to just experience. They're hoping that that experience will lead into an acquisition. Ish, yeah. <laughs> right, now, right now I'm busy buying microphones like I'm crazy so right? <laughs> I'm not going to get to a point where I'm going to start you know I, I hope I do I did buy some art at uh, Comic Exposed um, Comic Con Comic Convention okay. there's some really beautiful um, art done digital art right uh, and I bought it and I knew people I was going to give it to right because I don't keep it like I I, I don't keep art that's weird like I, I buy it to then give it away um, and it's for, for specific people like right. I, I think of I know someone who definitely like that and I buy that for them Maybe we should start creating art on mics. <laughs> uh, that happens. That happens. It's supposed to be empty. It's supposed to be literally empty. Do you reckon? No, it will. It will be. I, I have a problem. I really I have, I have a problem. <laughs> I have a real problem. So wow. you, as, as a gallery owner, um, financially, what kind of overheads do you expect? Because I, I have, an, I have a, kind of a, uh, an idea Yeah. that it's not the most, what can I say? Uh, it's not the most expected path to take to, to run a gallery because... Yeah. If someone sees you, they don't know. What, okay, Nanda Mari, how? Like, how do you keep all of this running? Right. Uh, so overheads, uh, basically, the biggest overhead is uh, the openings. Okay. Uh, so we try and retain the culture of uh, hosting people to yeah. free wine and cheese experience as we're opening the show okay. because we appreciate your company. And we honestly do want you around longer. And hope that you can, you know, get I'm here get, for the gin, get, get drunk and, and <laughs> spend I'm, some money. I'm usually here for the gin. The All gin right, <laughs> your yeah. dilution is insane, though. right? Jeez. Oh, do you like those? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's 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 at the point where I'm like, this is not enough for okay. one. Drink. It's a bit much for a single drink. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, but it's good. It's good. No complaints. Oh, cheers. Yeah. So uh, that's how our major. I mean, I think internationally, from my observation, uh, it, it costs everyone about a minimum of three hundred dollars just to put together a show. Okay. And then you've got the cost of uh, bringing the works in. Mm. Sometimes I have to actually physically go to an artist studio and uh, collect the works, mm. bring them in. Some of the work is not framed. Some of the work is not ready to hang. Mm. And we've got to uh, invest in that as well. Mm. So it, it also depends. Uh, some artists have their works ready to hang and some artists need that support. And mm. that's where our patronage comes in. And we're happy to do that. Uh, so we can present the work in the best manner possible mm. with the hopes that someone will appreciate it, yeah. So when it comes to sales and someone buys the art, yeah. it's obviously a commission that goes to the gallery. 
Yes. So traditionally, galleries do take a commission mm. uh, from exhibition sales. That's that's the business of uh, selling art. Mm. Uh, that a gallery would take a, a commission, but. Uh, of late, we've personally started reflecting on that. We had a conversation actually with an artist, one of the artists we exhibited with, and I asked her frankly, and I said, listen, uh, what terms and conditions would you like to work under? And she mm. said, I wish galleries didn't take any commission whatsoever. <laughs> and so we decided, fair and fine, we'll listen to what the artist says. I'm sure she's not the only one talking and thinking along those lines. And so we decided to uh, eliminate the, the concept of taking a commission. Mm. So as of this year uh, in fact we started the concept in the middle of covid that's mm. when we, we kind of thought hey let's work on this concept and see whether that would work mm. when things settled up and yeah so we decided not to take any commissions interesting enough uh when we made this decision we kind of threw it out there and we asked some artists what they thought about it mm. we anticipated that it would excite them mm. and then to our surprise it didn't excite many of them. They were worried about how we would be able to sustain our space. And more so because it was a space that they actually like. Okay. And they wanted to see it continue and thrive, okay. you know, uh, from a commercial perspective. Uh, and then a couple of weeks later, having uh, brewed over this concept, I learned that uh, the Dean Collection in the United States, mm. run by Alicia Keys and Swiss Beats, mm. Uh, actually had an art fair called the No Commissions Art Fair. Oh, nice. So that kind of got us very excited to realize that, well, someone's doing it and mm. they appreciate that it can be done. So we decided let's continue doing it. So our aspiration now is to maybe collaborate with the Dean Collection. And, uh, <laughs> Anything's possible. Yeah, like, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah anything's yeah, possible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I saw a picture of Jay-Z one day in a mm. gallery and I thought... Uh, there aren't that many galleries around. The like the odds of me seeing Jay Z and meeting him personally yeah. are higher because I run a gallery, you yeah. know, and because it's a space that they're interested in in walking in, and you know. And Jay Z's got a lot of Zimbabwean art, doesn't he? Yes, he does apparently. Well, he has some. Some art. Yeah. I just don't know how much of it. Because I saw that big one that they have in the Rock Nation. Um, yes. Yes. I think for you or something. Uh, yes, Moffat Takadiwa. Yeah. Yes, that was. That was the guy that happened by the Yes, from right, Body Art Space, yeah. I remember, we remember talking about you, like, now his art is, like, super expensive now because someone like that has put the, the, the stamp there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And well, that, that's the weird thing, is that locally, I don't know about what the sales are like locally, but I've been to a lot of homes, right. and you see a lot of blank walls, and then even though I can't picture what I'd like to put there, but, like, yeah, that'd be a really nice space for a piece of art. Like, yeah. you know, if you find something that is that will tie the room together, not even something that tells a story, even something that's out of place but tells a story. What is the buyership like for the quote unquote Indian guys locally? So we also observed that that mm. there were lots of empty walls, and mm. the observation came especially during the COVID period when people were going live in their yeah. homes and realized, wait a minute, a lot of people don't have art in their homes. People that we would expect mm. to have it, and just thought maybe they were buying internationally. And in line with our intent to go uh, zero zero commission, mm. we thought, hey why don't we actually create a business model out of the gallery mm. that will allow us to present work in people's homes, uh, sell that as a subscriber kind of package, mm. and then not interfere with the gallery kind of operation. So we started a new product called Real Art, mm. uh, which is the coming together of real estate industry and art. Uh, we, anticipate, we aspire to expand our walls into people's homes. Mm. Uh, and hopefully through that we'll build the largest gallery in the world. That would be now. You'd be basically the what the Uber or the Airbnb of, yes, of art. Absolutely. Yeah. That yeah you don't yeah. actually own a physical gallery, but your art is everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, and what are the what are the prices like to get it from? Uh so we've got three three packages currently. We've got a ten dollar package, believe okay. it or not. Uh you'd be experiencing artworks in your home that range from about hundred dollars to five hundred dollars. Okay. And then we've got a thirty dollar package and you experience artworks that range from about five hundred dollars to a thousand dollars and then you've got a fifty dollar package and you experience some artworks from a thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars okay yeah so on, on a personal level i want to try it out on the ten dollar package but I, I imagine your your biggest clientele are corporates and real estate so the fifty dollar package is the one we've kind of uh, curated for the corporates okay uh, and then the thirty dollar package is the one would like to sell the most okay and then the ten dollar package is just for those who'd like to just give it a try give it okay. an experience the thing about art is also that once the value tends to influence is, is influenced by the size as well sometimes mm. so with the ten dollar package you'd be looking at smaller artworks but we were also trying to look into uh, 
the tenants that are renting a, a flat, for instance, you know, a very small space with very small walls. And, and so we thought, hey, you've got, those, those people also want to enjoy and yeah. experience art, you know? And, yeah. and so we thought, let's create a package for them, you know? And there's many of them. And I suppose that's where uh, culture stems from, you know? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. From the masses that, yeah. So what has the reception been for both the individual customer and the corporates? It's, it's so far so good. Uh, we've collaborated with an architectural firm okay. uh, and property developing company. And so they've kind of started introducing us to their clientele. Oh, okay. And yeah, it's been a beautiful relationship so far. And yeah, we, we, we enjoy seeing the reaction and responses of people seeing art in their spaces. <laughs> and because we know how addictive it is, mm. uh, we know that the likelihood of them never, you know, unsubscribing is, yeah. is very low. Yeah. Because then you're going to look at that wall and it'll be empty and then you'll, you'll really see that it's mm. an empty wall, you know? Yeah. So. And there's also a commission for if an artwork is bought in your premises. Yes. So we've started this concept uh, called culture curators. Mm. Yeah. Culture curators are individuals that would like to build a relationship with mm. uh, social influencers, mm -hmm. you know, uh, taste makers. Uh, people that we appreciate have a, a great networking ability and a broad uh, contact database. Mm. Uh, we allow these, we afford these people an opportunity to go out there, uh, present the real art concept to their friends, mm. uh, install uh, a hanging system in their homes so we don't have multiple holes in people's homes and things of that sort. And through that, should they make a sale on another person's wall, they make the commission as opposed to us. Okay. And we've negotiated that with the artists on their behalf, mm -hmm. and they get a 10% commission off whatever they sell. Nice. So yeah. if you got a $5,000 work in your home and you sell it, you get 500 bucks. Boom. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And if you sell 10 of those, then... Yeah. You, you, <laughs> it's, it's weird because it's like passive income. Because yeah. if you know the right people who like the right sort of thing, this is could be could work. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because like only it doesn't only work if you can't if you're not in the right circles for it to work with. You can't get people to appreciate. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes someone might just see something and be captivated by it. And be like yeah, how much is that going for? Yeah. Yeah. What, absolutely. What yeah. Off your wall, yeah. Yeah. Another thing that we also appreciate is the fact that uh, the rate of unemployment is pretty high mm. in this country at this moment, and so there are a lot of people that are capable of uh, th that actually are in very influential networks mm. but are just not employed yeah uh, maybe because there isn't the type of job that they would like to take up mm. and uh, the odds of them being sophisticated enough to appreciate art are very high mm. and this is an opportunity for them to actually consider this as a career path as sure. you know an income stream you know sure. and be aggressive about it uh, consider uh, your corporates mm. and, and the like yeah and it helps us with mobility as well yeah yeah and again it's like it's like free marketing in, in a way because kind of you're gonna get your name out there yeah uh, through the subscription service as well but I'm saying people will then know that you can actually if someone is part of the culture creative they can actually buy you know um, artwork off of them and your name just keeps traveling and traveling and traveling yeah, which yeah, yeah. I guess it's not free because there's a lot of responsibility with art like for example the question of insurance like how do you insure a piece in someone's home yeah so we've been talking to insurance companies mm. uh, uh, in terms of art insurance it's not something that they're familiar with at the present moment uh, i do not know one insurance company that has insured some artworks before mm -hmm. but they had to take these artworks to south africa to get them certified and then bring them back in and then insure them so there's no one certifying anything in zimbabwe like not at the present moment uh, okay. Well, apart from us, oh, okay. yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 apart from us, and some other galleries do. I mean, the National Gallery, if you'd like oh, okay. a certificate on request, they will issue a certificate with okay. your artwork. Yeah, but I mean, it needs to be standard practice yeah, yeah. Uh, for this to work, yeah. you know, and for insurance companies to appreciate that this is what it is. Yeah. It's also a lot easier to execute uh, now with uh, contemporary artists mm -hmm. because they are live to tell you what the value of the work is, and you mm -hmm. can't argue them because <laughs> that is what they say yeah. it's worth. Uh, whereas, suppose it's, it's it's more difficult when you're dealing with. Uh, artists that have passed away and, mm. and uh, posthumous and yeah things of that sort so that, 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 that's now like how, how do you then deal with that like uh, an artist passed away how do you then value the work well you just got to appreciate the provenance look at uh, the track record of what they've sold when they were alive and how much that was and yeah but I'm guessing selling something like that would be very difficult because you have that piece of history in your, in your hands basically uh, well, the thing is with contemporary art, uh, the culture has only started recently in Zimbabwe. Uh, 
prior to contemporary art, we have the shorter stone sculptures, mm. and those are very well documented. It's an age that was well documented, and so people kind of appreciate the value of what things should be. Mm. And yeah, so there's 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 a we've lost some artists uh, through death, but there's not that many artists that have passed away, and, and mm. so yeah, we, we're still very familiar with what things are worth, and yeah. How we should price things. So one day I could possibly buy this and then keep it in my house, and then you know it can be worth millions of dollars at some point. Because it's an it's an investment at the end of the day, which is what's confusing about the insurance companies. Like someone's actually paying money for this, so they'd like to make sure that in the event of loss or damage, they can claim something back. Yes. So yes. how they can't see that in terms of what how art is insured elsewhere in the world right. doesn't make sense for me. Do they need convincing? Don't don't they understand the concepts around it? Or for them, is insurance medical and vehicle insurance that way it ends? I think now that uh, spaces like ours exist, mm. uh, they'll appreciate that once we certify an artwork, it's certified and it's it's genuine. Okay. You know? yeah. I think in many instances there was also the issue of uh, unstable uh, establishments you okay. know? and and galleries coming and going or pop up in establishments. And, you know, so you can't really. Uh, certify something from a pop-up experience you know it may as well be a scam for all you know you know <laughs> but now that we have physical spaces like ours that have been there and have a track record and you know i, I think they'll be trusting enough to um, play along and yeah Interesting. ensure yeah. the work but yeah i appreciate that you you've inquired on that because it's a very critical aspect oh, yeah. Uh, to yeah the business model of it yeah, yeah because yeah. for me it's like it doesn't make sense for me to, to buy a piece of art if i if i know that in, in the event of something unfortunate I can't recoup my investment because at the end of the day, it's an investment. Yes. Uh, yeah. The appreciation of the art itself is, is is one aspect of it, but again, it's, it's the investment you put into it because I can imagine people spend a lot of money on, on things they want to own physically. Right. And they yeah. want to make sure those things are protected. Yeah. Uh, even in insurance, you won't be you won't be able to get the art back, but at the very least, you can get the value of whatever was was insured on, yes. on, on yeah. that art. Yeah. Yeah. So I can imagine how much how much do you think is out there in Zimbabwe in terms of uninsured art, like a guesstimate in terms of billions of dollars. I, it, it's something we would love to actually uh, also kind of document and find out, you mm. know, uh, do the research and development and find out, hey, how much art is out there? Uh, we've been imagining creating a database of all artists and what they actually have in their studios right now nice. and kind of appreciate the value of what's out there, you know, mm. uh, in terms of art. Uh, I think it would also make sense uh, for other corporates, uh, mm. bankers, yeah, yeah. Uh, the government yeah. to really appreciate uh, that value. Uh, in terms of what has already been acquired, mm. I really can't tell. But there's a lot of art I know. You mm. know, uh, there's a lot of art that has been created. There are a lot of popular artists that have existed uh, through from the Rhodesian times. There's still artworks that exist now on people's walls. Mm. You know? It would be interesting to find out. Uh, I suppose once we, <laughs> now that people know that they can come and certify their artworks through us, it yeah. would be great for us to have them come through and do that. Yeah. And the certification process goes how? Does it need the artist's validity or do you guys independently start tracing back the origins of the art itself? So if the artist is alive, then yeah, the artist will have to certify the artwork themselves and then we kind of second their opinion. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and appreciate that what they're saying is kind of yeah, accurate. And, and yeah. posthumous? Uh, posthumous uh, then we do a lot of research oh, okay. yeah so it, that includes now consulting the national gallery and, mm. and other institutes and inquiring whether someone knows this artist what they know about them mm. and yeah and their practice yeah. it also helps to uh, receive the story from the owner of the uh, yeah, 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 yeah where they bought it why yeah. they bought it and how they bought it yeah because i'm trying to imagine estate sales for example yeah that there will be a lot of art there that is probably worth millions of dollars that's really, really old or really, really unique or one of a kind that's been sold, you know, a penny on the dollar at auction because no one could quite, you know, give it a, a value or a term or, or explain why or what it is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If, if it be colonial or be it uh, local art. And there's there's such work that's been found in, in the garbage. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Literally, I mean, when, when people die and, or people move and things of that nature and... Mm. Or when things are passed down a generation and, you know, a certain generation just doesn't have an appreciation of what they actually own. Mm. And, yeah. But so everything is a value. Like, I'm trying to imagine if I see a piece of art in the trash, I'll be like, yeah, let me just go ask who did this and yes, what it's yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. But I guess, you know, not everyone's in that frame of mind to, to try and... I, I own quite a bit of work that I've just picked from the auction and you just have ridiculous prices like you know <laughs> for this lot yeah. uh, give me 65 dollars you're like really this entire lot you so know? Where do you keep all your art though 
Uh, I've got some hung in my house, okay. uh, some in storage. Okay. And yeah, some I've started giving to relatives to hang in their spaces as okay. well, so they can also start appreciating uh, having art in their homes. It's yeah. a lot of art, man. You need storage for it. It says quite a lot. It's it's quite a bit. <laughs> it's growing. Okay. Yeah. It's not where I would like it to be, but yeah, yeah. So how much, how much did you give a money value for your collection? Let's just say the, the 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 things that you've seen are like, yeah, you know what? This stuff is quite expensive. I'm gonna put it in a special, you know, uh, safety deposit box. Our private collection. Yeah. I'd hate to tell, you know. Okay. <laughs> it's it's work that I haven't done yet. Let me say so. Yeah. That's very We'd... diplomatic. <laughs> very diplomatic. Because yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure you have a number in your head that you're like, yeah. It's 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 work that we're here to do, you know. Okay. Uh, we've been pressed to uh, celebrate what we see now and what okay. what what's there today, you know. But I do appreciate that at some point we're going to have to do that, you know. Uh, and at some point we're going to have to go back and start talking to artists and inquiring of, to remind us what we bought this for, by the way, and yeah. things of that sort. Yeah, yeah. So it's all work in progress. Yeah, nice. it's a growing process. Yeah. So I, I guess it'll be a horrible. It'll be a, not a horrible. It'll be a uh, deficient conversation about art about talking about NFTs. NFTs, yeah, right. Because yeah. I, 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 you know, I was supposed to write something about NFTs last year, okay. but at the point I didn't understand what they were, and right. then through getting exposure to what they what they've done and all the controversy around it, I kind of formed an image in my head like they're great, right? Uh, because in certain applications, it could make sense for artists like music. Um, to have the only singular copy that you can't transfer. But again, with streaming services, it's already like that. Um, you know, once you buy a copy of something, you pretty much own a copy or a digital copy of it. Yeah. Then for artists, artists as well, I'm like, yeah. And let me get your opinion of it since you're close to the art world. Okay, okay. NFTs. Uh, so the thing that we've learned about uh, collecting art mm. and then running an art gallery is that you exist in two different realms in that mm. instance. Uh, as a collector, you're somewhat an artist's best friend. And then as an, an art gallery, you're an institute uh, uh -huh. and you're hardly an artist's best friend. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, many artists have the impression that galleries rip them off. Uh, okay. Just like uh, managers rip off, apparently, <laughs> supposedly <laughs> rip off uh, uh, other artists, musicians, uh -huh. sports, uh, sportsmen and yeah. things of that sort. So... What NFTs have tried to do now is decentralize that power mm. that the art world assumes that galleries have mm. over uh, the art industry. Yeah. Without an appreciation of the fact that uh, these institutes actually invest a lot of time and money into mm. making things happen. Mm. You know, uh, Like I was saying, you know, we, we put so much money into making the show happen mm. and building relationships with collectors and, and things of that sort. And we're constantly trying to innovate on behalf of the artist, whilst the artist continues to create their body of work, you know, uh, it, it as far as I'm concerned, it's it's a relationship that is very critical, uh, but has been undermined with the development of technology and things of that sort. So NFTs have come into this realm to try and decentralize that power, uh, pretty much shut down uh, the gallery yeah, yeah. concept. Yeah, 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 and that's what they they pretty much are. Uh, they're the equivalent of uh, cryptocurrency, yeah. which is also trying to shut down the institute of uh, centralized banks, yeah. you know, uh, and so yeah, that's 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 NFTs for you. I, I I don't get it, man. Like I, for me, the physical nature of something yeah holds way more value than the digital of it. True. Now yeah. I don't. I'm okay with people making money off NFTs. Like if you can find someone who's willing to buy it and yeah. sees value in it, that's art. Like yeah, you you, you, can, you can sell it. Yeah. But from the way I'm seeing it, there's um, there's more of a let's jump on the bandwagon and make sure that we hold as much value as we can so when this thing blows up we can then be in the we, we, we will be the early adopters we can then make so much money when we then sell up our, our stock or appreciate value there's a possibility that uh, in the long term if we do go that digital route mm. uh, it just becomes normalized and the value of it becomes equivalent to what it is today so but they're diehards like me who might not ever enjoy or might never, might never buy an NFT who wants the actual actual paint, right. the physical process of it to see. Because in, 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 in de depending on the medium, you can see expression in the way an artwork is yeah. done. So it's, it's difficult to do that on, well, it's difficult to communicate that, I should say. Maybe it's just my opinion, but maybe in my, in my mind, it's difficult for me to see br the brush strokes. 
like intensity of brush strokes through you know a uh, uh, digital image maybe i don't appreciate it in that way i remember a time when people collected stamps postage yeah. stamps yeah. because a, a lot of people actually posted letters yeah. they wrote letters and a lot of people were very particular about their handwriting because they wrote letters and they enjoyed doing mm. that you know and you can't imagine that age today you know uh, there's a generation that will never know that actually happened that mm. they were pen pals you know <laughs> yeah uh, and you just never know uh, maybe nfts are the future you know uh, maybe the generation that's emerging today will appreciate that culture more than uh, the culture that we we mm. lived to know you know I should actually bring back letters sorry you bring back letters Yeah. Post yeah office. absolutely that would be beautiful yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a personal there's a personal touch to it it's not as immediate as what we have now with, with you know you know instant messaging or whatever yes yeah. but the care and time it takes to put something to put something to paper and having a physical record of that they can only be destroyed if someone burns it yes yeah, or you yeah. know throws it away or whatever it is i think prisoners still enjoy that culture <laughs> uh, yeah, probably probably a day more step yeah step. but i'm saying in the, in the generality of everyone like you know because i used to write letters in high school Yes. These are pen pals in, in other yes. cities and things yeah. like that, yeah. even yeah. international pen pals. Yeah. It was interesting because you could, it was, it was an experience, like the, the texture of the paper is different, the ink they use is different. Right. There's a bit of a smell of home from where they are yeah. in, in, yeah. in the yeah. envelope. Yeah. So it, it's, it was a weird experience, but yeah, you're right, you're right. But yeah, and that's the physical aspect that you're saying yeah. you're, you're connected to as well in terms yeah. of art. And yeah, I appreciate that uh, that does exist. I mean, a lot of people have struggled to imagine uh what the art space really would be without physical exhibitions you know mm. without seeing an artwork and its actual size you know uh when you take a picture of an artwork you can't even tell its actual dimensions yeah, just scale. from looking at yeah the scale yeah. yeah so it's and yet the, all those things kind of influence your experience you know mm. your emotions uh, so yeah i also hope that uh, we won't uh, totally get rid of that aspect mm. uh, the physical aspect of art appreciation Uh, but hey I, i don't know where this world is going but <laughs> <hey? laughs> well, have you heard of anyone who sold an nft locally like someone who's yes how much uh, you go for i think about 2500 if i'm not mistaken okay yeah i think his name is julio interesting yes there's 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 a network of uh, nft artists in zimbabwe where do we find them uh online <laughs> So there's a sensitivity to it as well yeah, because yeah. Uh, I mean some of them sell through crypto and crypto uh, is not legal in yeah, Zimbabwe yeah. and so yeah many of them exist in the digital realm. Okay. And in terms of an actual piece of art that was sold what was the highest value you ever heard or witnessed? In, in Zimbabwe? like Zimbabwe yeah. right? I know an artist that sold her artworks for over $200,000 US okay, okay. dollars yeah 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 recently through an auction. Uh, her no name is Porsche Zavera. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, when, how recent is recent? I think about a year ago. Okay, uh, 200 yeah, grand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was through uh, the Philips auction house. Okay, yeah. nice. Yeah. And what, what's what's the tax situation like for cuz I mean guess she's here. Or so she's represented like Philips uh, auction house is an international based oh, okay. uh, auction house that was a sale that uh, took place international. So that's another thing about uh, uh, the industry in Zimbabwe. Mm our government doesn't recognize that there's an opportunity and this is why i was talking about the as the intent to actually document how much work we have the, yeah. and the value of it because the thing about an artist is that they are the commodity yeah. so once that individual gets on a plane and they go to another location yeah. the commodity is relocated yeah you can't really attach that to uh, your taxing system and say hey wait a minute so for as long as we have we don't have uh, laws that regulate and kind of allow artists to be celebrated mm. we'll continue to lose great artists and great value mm. uh, i mean the united states for in- instance has got uh, the vara laws you know yeah. uh, these are visual arts uh, uh, laws that actually protect the artists and appreciate that this is of public interest you know mm. that art actually betters uh, our emotional existence you know so we've we've got a lot of work to do in terms of art appreciation locally mm. we, we really need uh, our government to begin with to start appreciating the fact that listen uh, like i say this is the voice of god you know <laughs> and yeah. for as long as uh, we undermine it we're undermining <laughs> so, yeah, no, I, i totally understand that when people think brain drain they think you know professionals in offices or people in labs but it's also artists as well yeah. because yeah. um 
on a monetary point of view, the amount of money artists can ge- if an artist can generate is ridiculous. Yeah. If the artist appreciated or seen in light of, 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 of you know, their, their quality, their talents, their expression, if it's seen in a way of even, even international repute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then it's also the, the sense that you're, you've got a cultural figure. Yes. You've got now in the community, like someone who can now probably mentor the next generation and yes. help yeah. foster their ideas yeah. Yeah. to push it forward. Now, even if it's NFTs or whatever it is, like you then need people, again, most mentors kind of remove the fear of trying things right. from from. So we lose that as well. Right. Yeah. And then we don't yeah. have yeah. A, a diverse enough art scene or people who are as experimental as we would like as what we're seeing out there. Yeah. I know there are a bunch of experimental artists in Zim, like there are a lot of them. But I'm saying just when it's it's almost palpable how much people are pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Because from what I've seen in most galleries, it's, it's a lot of expression. It's a lot of things I would say I've seen, but also appreciate right. that it's a different sort of journey. Yeah, yeah. But it's like when you go out there and go in Europe and you see too many people are really pushing boundaries. It's a whole different experience. It's, yeah, it's, like yeah. it's, it's a whole yeah. different thing. Even with artists from Zimbabwe, you know, mm. uh, they also experiment a lot and present that experimental work internationally because mm. they appreciate the fact that, yeah, a lot of people would understand it locally. Yeah. You know? uh, we've had some experimental work in our space and people walked in and they thought it was scary and intimidating <laughs> and, you know, gory. Yeah. <laughs> and they were expecting to see something that was happy and jovial, but... Mm. Hey, that's not how emotions roll all the time, you know. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, we don't feel so happy, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it's 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 a matter of opinion with art, you know. It's it's the artist's feelings. So sometimes, you know, they just express them the way they are. You know? Yeah, you can you can choose, you know, to to discover what they're trying to to say in meaning and in, in the art itself. Yeah. Or you can choose to 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 move away, and I, I both sides work work well enough. Yeah. But I, I usually like people who walk into a gallery, not you know. With no expectations, just going there trying to experience something. Right. And those people I like to go to galleries with because you don't. Every piece of art is a is a, it's a conversation. Like it's, it's it's a constant conversation. Yeah, yeah. Even if you don't appreciate the style, at the very least, it got you to talk about uh, yeah, about yeah. something. It's important to take time to understand why the artist is doing what they're doing. Yeah. You know, and how they do it. You yeah. know, uh, a lot of people undermine uh, the technique that's involved in some of this the processes you know Mm. Uh, this for instance is a printmaking technique you know Mm. and this is literally an individual uh, performing what a printer would do you know and uh, applying layers of paint uh, on on a piece of paper so you know there's pieces to it you know and just to think about the fact that they did that you know that they came uh, layer by layer and applied and then eventually ended up with this you know it gives you an appreciation of uh what they've put into that just the imagination to, to to try and do that like the trial and error involved as well yeah in getting things right and getting it wrong yeah, and, yeah, yeah yeah because people think when an artist gets things wrong it then becomes the art when they know they have a clear vision of what they want in their minds yeah or might not but they have a, a direction they want to go into uh go towards and if they don't attain that they have to start again yes it's, absolutely it's, it's not a, it's not it's not a haphazard process yes, it's, it's, yes, yes for yes. some it's structured some it isn't but there is a method here and there there is yeah absolutely yeah 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 and then, and then you have a lot of people assuming that, oh, my child can do that. And it's not really the case <laughs> in most not, cases. It's yeah. And yeah. It's, it's, just, it's, it's, it's a lot of, like you're saying, technique. Yeah. Most of these people might be classically trained. Yes. And the combination of all those like skills have come to the point where they can do something like this yeah. to a consistent degree. Yeah. And, and th- there's another thing as well, as I mentioned about my child can do it. Yeah. Uh, what people don't appreciate is that uh, children are the most potent uh, version of humans mm. uh, so imagine their learning capabilities and our learning capabilities mm. they learn languages just by listening you know mm. whereas if you tried listening <laughs> to people it would take you much longer yeah, to yeah. do that you know so if people actually tried to paint like children mm. which many artists actually do and challenge themselves to do mm. they'll realize it's very difficult to actually achieve that yeah, you know what i mean yeah. so so yes uh Maybe you should be buying your children's artwork for a lot of money as yeah, well, you know, yeah, true that, true that. and and preserving it and appreciating that there's a narrative there, and because mm. they 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 don't just they really mean something when they create all their artworks, you know. It's something they're seeing, yeah. Yes, it's something they're seeing, yeah, yeah. So even if it doesn't make sense in the immediacy, it's, it's good to document. And with the way you know, camera technology has gotten so good, if you don't have a place to physically display it, you can keep it in a in a, in a digital device and yes, yeah, keep it in yeah, storage yeah, yeah, and then yeah. see the evolution of it. Yeah. And I think art should be a, it, should, it should be incorporated in every in everyone's development because it's mostly expression, right? Yeah. Up until the it point is. where you refine the processes, you're now you're now speaking in, in exact terms. Yes. 
but like like a child i guess is like you start with just you know whatever comes to mind whatever you can and that's what you express yeah, yeah. and then yeah. at some point you then refine it to a point where you impart your style or you've discovered a way of it that you want to do something yeah correct yeah uh, peter thank you very much for your time uh, thank you was that it was it come on let's talk more <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk more camera Sh- should i lead you to some other uh, conference because <laughs> we'll be here all day we'll be here all day but uh, yeah any any upcoming uh, exhibitions here uh so the thing is due to covid yeah. uh, we've tried not to uh, premeditate our roster mm. uh, but yeah we do have a couple of exhibitions coming up uh, we 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 enjoy solo exhibitions mm. uh, so yeah we've got a few exciting solo exhibitions coming up nice uh, yeah and that's about it so yeah just send me through the details so i'll just post it to everyone who's interested we will yeah, absolutely yeah. yeah so for everyone listening for the guys on video you're lucky you got to see the artist so <laughs> the guys listening on audio i'm sorry it is what it is. Go to YouTube. I think you, I'll, I'll leave a link down there so you can watch it on YouTube. Yeah, super. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So thank and you. yeah, we'll, we're hoping to be more active with our social media. So you, yeah, it's really quiet. It is. It is really quiet. <laughs> the reason why is because we've tried to be very organic about our growth. Oh, okay, uh, okay, okay. And so we've been growing the space very organically and trying to appreciate who would just walk into the space and you know stumble upon the space. And, oh, okay. and we're, we're fortunate enough to be in a space of aesthetics in, yeah. in a nursery. So yeah, yeah. the assumption is that we would meet an audience here yeah. who just appreciate aesthetics yeah. and we've tried to have a very personal and intimate conversation with them but yeah we're, we're hoping that soon we'll have the energy and the human resource <laughs> and the budget to yeah, Probably the social media. yeah to have a more active social media yeah. platform but we do have our instagram that's growing slowly uh which is artillery the art gallery i'll leave links in the description oh yeah super. Check that, yeah. yeah great yeah twitter as well or mm-hmm. uh we, we, we're most active on our instagram, instagram currently uh we started with our facebook and then we just got so tired uh, no, you know facebook is old so like, yeah it's, it's become this yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's where i don't go because i just people want to post the progress of their lives and i'm like great right but i'm not here for this <laughs> i'm going to the marketplace yeah. so it's yeah, i think facebook is more like a marketplace it doesn't seem more like a place where i can enjoy content right that yeah. makes sense yeah i yeah. think for pictures instagram makes sense yeah, um, yeah. even i think tiktok I think tiktok would be great for exhibitions getting little oh, snapshots really? of it it's an addiction that i'm trying to work out of like okay. i'm really trying to work my way out of it but i see the utility in it it's like it's really good in presenting information in like short clips okay so you will get a picture of what you guys do what it's about and things like that it's not like a you can get serious with it if you want, but right. like it's, yeah. it's it's a it's it's a very weird place to be. Interesting. We'll check out TikTok. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. yeah. But yeah, we're excited. We've we're currently spending a lot of time with our real art concept, yeah. and you know, installing artworks in people's homes and allowing them to rotate artworks in their houses yeah. and you know, appreciate it from there. So that's consuming a lot of our time. And yeah. mm-hmm. so I'll actually leave the we'll put the poster in there as oh, well. Oh yes, so yeah, can, yeah, and the yeah. details. Or yeah, where we can't put a poster, we'll put details. Yeah, yeah. Where if someone wants to reach out to you and then like you know, rent art for. Yeah, absolutely. Subscription yeah. service for art is just, I think it's the first in Zim, isn't it? I think so, yes. Well, there's, uh, I know that the National Gallery does uh, lease out artworks as well, mm. but these are artworks that they own, whereas our concept is artworks that you can purchase. You can purchase, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, so it's the... It is a first. Yeah. It is a first yeah. in it its own right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, thank you very it's, much, Peter. Yeah, it's the first. It, it, there are a few people doing that. You, you, you don't keep me talking. I know. I, I <laughs> There's so talking. much to say. Yeah, it is. It is. But we'll, we'll, we'll come back and we'll have a, uh, I think, we'll document a, uh, an exhibition. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, that would be lovely. And we'll have a bit more, more conversation around the exhibition itself and what it takes to actually set something up because people think it's just get a space, six stuff on walls, and, you know, you roll. Where yeah, it's, no. it's actual work that goes into to, to getting it. Yeah, you're, you're welcome to do that. Yeah. 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 We look forward to you visiting us again. Mm, very soon, actually. And, yeah, thank you for considering our space for this conversation. I mean, this is the best space I've recorded in, so... Yeah. I, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that I've heard all the other spaces, but... In, in fact, maybe we should turn this into a culture. How about you have every Fridays and you just have a conversation in our space? I'm done for and that. we can rotate the artwork in the backdrop as well. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can work with it. Let's do it. You're yeah, welcome. It. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Every man. Friday. Every Friday, yeah, we do that. Every Friday. Invite a couple of your your friends and yeah. I'll bring some of my friends yeah. and we'll enjoy some wine. Sure. Great. Yeah. You won't hear about the wine platform. <laughs> that was not me. That was not Peter's <laughs> idea. I'm 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 innocent in all of <laughs> So thanks about Peter. Uh so we'll be here next Friday. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Great. Set up and then go. Cheers. Cheers. We'll see you next Friday. Ciao.